Hi and welcome to this lesson where we will look at complex trinomials. Okay, so what is a trinomial and why uh, did I put it in uh, inverted commas to suggest it's not really trinomials that we're going to look at? Um, well, a trinomial is first of all a three term expression. A three term expression. Okay, but what makes it a trinomial, that's where the tri comes from, is three terms. Okay, but the nomial, the nomial suggests that it is a polynomial, and a polynomial um, is an expression like this, ax to the power n plus bx to the power n minus 1 plus cx to the power n minus 2, all the way up to um, uh, your last term, whatever that can be, let's just say it's d, but it's actually x to the power of 0. In other words, um, and here it's important that our exponents are from the natural numbers, numbers, um, whole numbers starting from zero. That would be a strict definition of a polynomial, where a trinomial would just be the first three of these, okay? Which, where the lowest one is uh, zero, so it's just x to the power of zero, which is one, so it's just a c. It, um, that means the highest one, the next one is one more than that, so it's x to the power of one, and the next one is x to the power of two. Okay, the first, the leading term is x to the power of two. Now, why I'm calling this um, complex and trinomials with inverted commas is we're going to look at similar expressions. Um, because we know how this is factorized, this factorizes into two brackets, where the first term, if I call this s1, x, this s1 times this s2. I'm just using s as a um, as an example here. That's the coefficient of this one, efficient of this one. When I multiply s1 and s2, I get a, okay, plus t1 and t2. When I multiply t1 and t2, I'll get c. And I when I do this kind of cross multiplication, the the, the ins and the outs, t1 s1 plus s1 and t2 multiplied if I add them together I'll get b okay so that's how I factorize this expression and also how I simplify the factorized expression now the idea remains the same if I've got an expression as such if I've got any any base okay with an exponent any exponent okay and I and it's got some coefficient. Doesn't matter what coefficient. I'm going to say shouldn't have used b for the base. Uh, let me use something else for the base. Let's use uh, a u for the base with any exponent. Okay, and a coefficient, any coefficient. You'll see why I use b in just a second. Okay, and to that I add any constant, c, and also to that I add another term that has the same, that's got a coefficient, it's got the same base, but it's got double the exponent. Okay, whatever exponent is here, this this exponent is double. Then this is kind of a complex trinomial. It's a, it's not a normal trinomial, but this one would also be able to factorize if it's the same a, b, and c the, uh, up here than I have down there. It will also factorize in the same s and t expression but with yeah you can see if I've got an expression like this ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero and then it, uh, we know that this factorizes into two brackets um, and this term will have an x and that term will have an x in other words my brackets will have the same exponent as the middle term in the same way these two brackets that I get here will have the same cof same exponent as the middle term. In other words, in other words, it will have the exponent e because it's the same exponent as the middle term plus t1 and then s2 base with the same exponent as the middle term plus t2. Okay, um, so let me show you just a few very, very simple examples and then you'll get exactly what I mean. Okay, for example, if I had something like x to the power of 4 plus 
2x squared plus 1. Okay, then you'll notice that I've got three terms and my leading terms co uh, the, sorry, the leading terms exponent is double the middle terms exponent. That means I might be able to factorize into two brackets, not always the case, but I might be. And the terms that I have in here, the unknowns in here, will have the same exponent as the middle term. Okay, x squared. And both of them will be plus one plus one because I multiply these two to get the one and I add these two to get the middle term. Okay, how about an expression like this? In this expression, uh, you can see we've got three terms. One of the three terms is a, a constant, and we've got our constant term. The middle term has an exponent of a quarter, and if I double that, double um, two quarters gives me a half. So here I see I've got a trinomial, in inverted commas, a trinomial type of expression, which means it might be able to factorize into two brackets, where the first of those bracket, the first term in that bracket, is um, will have the same base that I'm working with here, but the same exponent as in the middle. So the same power as the middle one. Okay, and y to the power of a quarter. Now the coefficient for this should multiply to give me the coefficient of the one in front, which is just one. So obviously these two have to be a one and a one. Okay. Now, what times what gives me negative 6, but when I add it together, I get positive 5. And that's the numbers negative 6, sorry, positive 6 and negative 1. Positive 6 times negative 1 gives me negative 6, and positive 6 plus negative 1 gives me positive 5. So um, there I've factorized this expression. Minus 10 times 3 to the power of x plus 9, okay, um, equal to 0, and here we might have been, uh, well, you could just follow what we've learned before, where we just isolate the powers the, that we want to uh, solve, which is 3 to the power of x, but you could have also now used what we learned now, and what we learned was that if I've got three terms, which I do, and um, I look at the middle term's exponent, and I can find another term that has double that exponent, it might be a trinomial. In this case, it is. It can factorize into two brackets, okay, where the coefficient or the exponent is the same as, as the middle term, which the base is 3, the exponent is x. It's somewhat different than where I had an unknown base as before, but it doesn't make a difference in terms of how the, um, the algebra works behind this thing, okay. So, 3 to the power of x, we can see the coefficient is 1, so there won't be... Um, well, let me just show you here. What is a, a in here? a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 10, and c is equal to positive 9. So I just want to show you that a is in fact not 3, and a is not the exponent of x up here, no. a is what comes in front of the power it doesn't matter if the power, the base of the power is known or unknown. The same goes for here. Just look at that expression. The a, the coefficient, is what comes in front of the power. And in this case, it just happens that the power is actually a, a, a number. Okay, so we'll have 3 to the power of x in both here. And then what times what gives me 9? And when I add it, I get negative 10. Okay. That is negative 9 and negative 1. When I multiply it, I get positive 9, and when I add them together, I get negative 10. So 3 to the power of x minus 9 is equal to 0, or 3 to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 0. So uh, in this case, x will equal 2. I'm solving it by, by um, inspection, just noticing that 3 to the power of 2 gives me 9 minus 9 is 0. And here x is equal to 0 because 3 to the power of 0 equals 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, but from here on you should be able to solve it 
uh, fairly easily. So um, I hope this helps. Uh, in the next video I'll look at uh, one or two more of these examples, but this should give you the main idea of, on how to solve what seems to be a complex trinomial equation. Good luck.